Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan in the house. And today we are going to use molarity to calculate the dilutions of solutions. Let's start some revolutions. Is it Jesus or evolution? Don't forget the constitution. Okay, so breaking that down as always, first thing we're gonna do is define what the heck dilution is. And then next, we're gonna perform three types of dilution calculations. Okay, so first thing first, definition. What the heck is a dilution? Uh, well, basically, we often, to save time and space in the lab, routinely use solutions that are often purchased or prepared in concentrated form. We call those solutions stock solutions. Now, a dilution is simply a process in which we take water to dilute our concentrated stock solution to our desired molarity or desired concentration. And that process is known as dilution. Now, it's important to remember that when you are working through dilutions uh, with water, you're not changing the number of moles of solute that you have present. All you're doing is changing the overall volume of solution, making it less concentrated. And while we're on the topic of dilutions, keep in mind that anytime you're diluting acids in the lab, it's always very important safety wise to make sure that you're always adding acid to water, never water to acid even though I just said you're gonna dilute by adding water to the solution. And it comes down to the different densities of the two things and whether or not you're gonna get a face full of acid. So uh, always remember when diluting acids to always add acid to the water. A to W, A and W root beer. That's how I remember it. Now, important to keep in mind that when we are diluting solutions, remember that the number of moles of solute does not change. Uh, and therefore we can set up this fantastic equation also also on your formula chart to help you figure out how to work through these dilution calculations where your initial concentration times your initial volume is equal to your final concentration times your final volume. And we can make that assumption because the number of moles has stayed the same. For you mathematical geniuses out there, this is just the molarity equation rearranged, solved for moles, and because moles stays the same, we can set this arrangement up. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, come and see me at tutorials. We'll have a grand old time doing some algebra. Woo, I love math. No, I don't. Okay, so to understand what's going on in dilution, I'm gonna work through a short simulation. Again, you can access this simulation on the website. It's a great way to practice the idea of dilutions without having to actually bust out all the chemicals and do it yourself. But we will do that in the lab in our next class. All right, so as you take a look at your screen, I provided you with the dilution formula, M1V1 equals M2V2. And we want to recognize here that our stock solution is 0.5 molar copper to sulfate. Not a very concentrated stock solution, but it's gonna be our stock solution that we are working with. This is essentially our initial concentration. And we are, in this video, going to prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.0500 molar solution. So we want to dilute our five molar concentrated solution to 0.05 molar. Now, to figure out how these dilutions work, recognize that I've just plugged in my initial concentration of my stock solution, 0.500 molar, and I need to know what volume of that solution do I need to make this dilution to a concentration of 0.05 molar solution that has a volume of 100 milliliters. Now notice I've converted my milliliters to liters to solve this equation because my molarity value is in moles per liter. So when I solve for X using my amazing algebra skills, notice that I, I'm, notice that I find that I need 0 0.01 zero zero liters. Or if I convert that back to milliliters, I need 10 milliliters, this is my X, right? So this is what volume of my initial concentrated solution I need. I need 10 milliliters of it to make 100 milliliters of a 0.05 molar solution. So I'm gonna select the 10 milliliter graduated pipette. Check out this awesome lab technique. We're gonna get exactly 10.00 milliliters. Ooh, so exciting. And we're gonna put that 10 milliliters into a 100 milliliter flask or a 0.1 liter flask. Now recognize at this point, 
the concentration of my solution is still 0.5 molar. It hasn't changed. All that I have done is taken 0.5 molar from a large stock solution and moved it into a different flask. The concentration has not yet changed. Hmm. But I solved this equation already, so I don't understand. Well, remember, this equation is just gonna get you the volume of your initial stock solution that you need. The remaining volume, in this case, 90 milliliters or 0.09 liters of water is what I need to add in order to dilute it to my new final concentration of 0.05 molar. So I'm gonna add some agua here. Again, this is a volumetric flask. I'm gonna add exactly up to that line so I know I got exactly the concentration that I would like. Give it a few swirls here to make sure that it's well mixed. I've now created 100 milliliters of a 0.05 molar solution from my original 0.5 molar stock solution. So we will practice this in class where you actually physically get to mix and do your own dilutions. But this is a great simulation, which I've linked to on the website. I encourage you to check it out to practice this and try some different dilutions and see if you can't get the math to work out for you as well. As always, check the info beneath the video to get some additional information in terms of where I pulled some of these great simulations and animations from. We are done.